Hello and welcome to this video on changing the subject of the formula where the subject appears once only. Now this here is a formula for converting between Celsius and Fahrenheit. So for example, if it was a really hot day, we might say uh, the temperature was 30 Celsius. So if we wanted to convert that to Fahrenheit, we would just have to do, well, 9 fifths times by the 30, and we add 32, and that would give us 86 in Fahrenheit. At the moment, this formula allows us to get from Celsius to Fahrenheit. And notice that the sort of Fahrenheit is on its own in the formula. And we call that the subject of the formula because it appears alone on one side of the equation and it doesn't appear on the other side of the equation. But it might be that we have a temperature in Fahrenheit and we want a formula for Celsius in terms of Fahrenheit. So we might want to make C the subject of formula. So the C is over here and we have C in terms of F. So we can see this is quite a useful skill to be able to change the subject of the formula. So let's dive straight into these examples here. So we've got question one, y is equal to 3x plus 1. And in every case, we want to make x the subject of the formula. Now we saw when we were solving equations that we could solve for x and get x on its own by undoing the things around it. So let's think of the story of what happened to x. x is being multiplied by 3, and then we're adding 1 to it. Now if you want to get x on its own, we undo those things in reverse order. So the last thing we did was add 1, so we therefore get rid of the plus 1 by subtracting 1 from both sides. So let's undo that plus 1. If we subtract 1 from both sides, remember whatever you do to one side you have to do to the other. So here we now have y minus 1, and when we subtract 1, that gets rid of the plus 1. It undoes it. So we now have this. And now to get x as a subject of the formula, x on its own, we just need to get rid of this times by 3. x is being multiplied by 3, so we undo it by dividing by 3. So if we now divide both sides by 3, y minus 1 divided by 3, well, we could just write the whole thing over 3. So y minus 1 is being divided by 3. And then when we divide the right-hand side by 3, it just gets rid of the times by 3, it undoes it, and we're left with x. And now x is the subject of the formula. It doesn't matter it's on the right-hand side. We could write x equals y minus 1 over 3. And we do typically have the subject of a formula on the left-hand side, but that would be completely valid. Let's do the next one. We've got y is equal to 3 brackets x plus 1. Now there's two options here. We could first expand the bracket to kind of free everything up. So if we did that, we'd have y is equal to, well we do 3 times the x is 3x, and we got 3 times the 1, which is plus 3. And then we could do the same as we did with the question before. So we want to get rid of that plus 3 because it's the last thing we did. So we minus 3 from both sides. And we get y minus 3 is equal to 3x. And then, because x has been multiplied by 3, we divide both sides by 3 again, and we get y minus 3 over 3 is equal to x. Alternatively, let's think about the story of what's happening to x. So x, we added 1 to it, and then we times that whole thing by 3. Well, the last thing we did was times by 3, so we could divide both sides by 3 first if we wanted to. So we divided both sides by 3. Well, the left-hand side becomes y over 3. And when you divide the right-hand side by 3, that gets rid of the last thing you did. It gets rid of that times by 3, and we're just left with x plus 1. So then we just need to get rid of that plus 1 to get x on its own. So we subtract 1 from both sides, and we just get y over 3 minus 1 is equal to x. Now, these look slightly different. Here we've got x equals 1 minus 3 over 3, and here we've got x equals y over 3 minus 1. They do look different, but actually they're the same thing because you could split this fraction up. You could split this as y over 3 minus 3 over 3. So each of those things in the numerator we could divide by 3. So y over 3, here we've got y over 3, minus 3 over 3, or well, 3 over 3 is 1. So our expression for x is in slightly a different form depending on which of these two methods we use, but both are legitimate. What about the next one? We've got y is equal to a third x minus 1. Now we could expand the bracket, or another trick we could use here is to multiply both sides by 3. Because if we were to do that, well, the left-hand side would just become 3y. But here you've got a third of a lot of x minus 1, 
So if you have three times as much, you would just have one lot of x minus one. So timesing by three basically cancels out that third. Third times three is one, and you're just left with x minus one. And then we could just add one to both sides to get rid of that minus one. So add one to both sides, and then we get three y plus one is equal to x. What about question four? We've got y is equal to 3x squared, and we want to make x a subject. So let's think very carefully, thinking about bidmus, remember the order of operations. What is the story of what's happening to x? Well, x is first being squared, because do you remember in bidmus, b i, i is for indices, powers, this is a power, comes before the multiplication, that's lower down bidmus. So we do the power first, so x gets squared first, and then e times by 3. It's not 3x then squared. So the last thing we did was times by 3, so we undo that first by dividing both sides by 3, and we get y over 3 is equal to x squared, because the divide by 3 got rid of that times by 3. And now what's the opposite of squaring? Well the opposite of squaring is square rooting, so we square root both sides, and we get the square root of y over 3 is equal to x, because the square root gets rid of the squared. Now technically we should put plus or minus, I'll briefly try to explain why. Let's just say that we had x squared is equal to 9, and I asked you to solve that. Well what number squared gives you 9? Well x could be 3, because 3 squared is 9, but also x could be minus 3, because minus 3 squared, well negative times negative is positive, so minus 3 times minus 3 is also 9. And we could write that as x is equal to plus or minus 3, and that symbol means that x could be 3 or it could be minus 3. And we have exactly the same thing here. If you square root both sides, technically on one of the two sides, but preferably the side without the subject on it, you put plus or minus. But generally GCC mark schemes condone the lack of the plus or minus, so you wouldn't usually get penalised if you didn't put it, but I would put it just in case. Right, what about the next one? y is equal to 3 root x plus 1. So let's think of the story of what's happening to x, and then we'll undo it in reverse order. x, you're adding 1, then you're square rooting it, and then you're timesing it by 3. The last thing you did was times by 3, so let's undo that times by 3 first. So you get y over 3 is equal to root x plus 1, because we divide the y by 3, y over 3, and by dividing by 3, it got rid of that times by 3. Next, what's the last thing that happened to x? Well, you added 1 and then you square rooted it. The last thing you did was square root, so we need to undo that first. Do not subtract 1 from both sides at this point, because the plus 1 is sort of trapped inside that square root. So we've got to undo the square root first, because it was the last thing we did. So we square both sides, so we have y over 3 all squared. Notice my use of brackets, because we want all of y over 3 squared. Whereas if we didn't have the brackets, it, you might think it only the y is being squared and not the whole of the fraction. And when we square this, it gets rid of the square root, so we just have x plus 1. And then we just subtract the 1 to get rid of that. So it's y over 3 all squared minus 1 is equal to x. Now you could... Uh, expand out the bracket, y over 3 times itself, y over 3 times y over 3 is y squared over 9, and that would probably look slightly nicer. But that is right, x is in terms of y, so we do have the correct answer. The next one, 6. So we've got y is equal to 3x plus 1 over 4. Now let's figure what's happening to x. We're timesing by 3, adding 1, then dividing by 4. So we undo the divide by 4 by timesing both sides by 4 first. So we get 4y is equal to... Now when we times by 4, it gets rid of the over 4. So we just get 3x plus 1. And then, well, x has been times by 3, then you added 1. So we get rid of the plus 1. That was the last thing. So we then get 4y minus 1 equals 3x. Then we just divide both sides by 3. So 4y minus 1 over 3 is equal to x. What about 7? We got y is equal to 3 minus 2x. Now you could subtract 3 from both sides. Um, so you could do y minus 3. And it's, well, we still got that minus there, so minus 2x. And then, well, x has been multiplied by minus 2. So we'd have y minus 3 over minus 2 is equal to x. Now, that's correct, but it's a bit ugly. We tend to like to avoid dividing by negative numbers. We'd rather divide by a positive number. So what I like to do is to make sure that the x term is on the side where it's positive first. So if we've got minus 2x, we could add 2x to both sides to get y plus 2x equals 3. 
And then, well, 2x, we're adding y, so we subtract y from both sides, and then we get 2x is equal to 3 minus y. And then we could divide both sides by 2, and we get 3 minus y over 2. And we're no longer dividing by a negative number. And that just looks cleaner than that. We've kind of got less minor symbols there. It just looks a bit cleaner. Now, I have a nice little trick that if x is in a term that's being subtracted from something and we want to make it the subject, there's something called the swapsy trick. So this is my swapsy trick. And it's this. Well, if you had 8 minus 3 is equal to 5, for example, what can we, what can we swap to make it still true? Well, 8 minus 5 is equal to 3. So it seems that we can swap the number we're subtracting and the result. And that means with this, well, x has been subtracted from something. So we can swap the thing we're subtracting, i.e. the 2x, and the result of y. So we can immediately write 2x is equal to 3 minus y. And then we could just divide by 2. And we eventually got to that point here, but it's just with the swapsy trick, you can, rather than using two steps, you can get directly to here in one step. And we'll see that trick later. What about question 8? We've got y is equal to 3 over x plus 1. Now, the tricky thing about this question is that x is being divided into a fraction. It's what we're dividing by. So what we could do first is to multiply both sides of the equation by x plus 1. So if we did that, we get y x plus 1, notice my use of brackets, is equal to, well, we times this by x plus 1, it gets rid of the over x plus 1, so we just get 3. And now x, we're adding 1 and then we're timesing by y, so we want to undo the times by y by dividing by y. So we get x plus 1 is 3 over y, and then we can just subtract the 1 to get 3 over y minus 1. We've made x a subject. And again, there's something called the swapsy trick, but the division swapsy trick, which makes rearranging this a bit easier. And it's this. So here's swapsy trick mark 2. And it's basically the same, but for division rather than subtraction. So note that 8 divided by 4 is equal to 2. Now, what two numbers could we swap here? Well, we could swap the 4 and the 2 to get 8 divided by 2 is equal to 4. That's clearly true. And that means from here, I can swap the thing I'm dividing by and the result. So I get x plus 1 is equal to 3 over y. And that means we've got straight from here to this step here. And again, we just subtract the 1. So you can use the swapsy trick for division whenever the subject is in the denominator. You wouldn't use it if it was in the numerator. So if I, for example, had y is equal to x plus 1 divided by 3, there's no point in using the swapsy trick because we'd be swapping the y and the 3. That doesn't really help us. You would multiply both sides by 3 first to get 3y is equal to x plus 1, and then clearly just minus 1 from both sides. So we wouldn't use the swapsy trick in this case because x, the subject, is not in the denominator. What about the next one? We've got y is equal to 1 plus 3 pi x. Now, the only reason I gave you this one is because when we're adding these two things, often you see the x term, or whatever you want to make the subject, as the first thing in addition. So don't be confused by the fact it's the second thing in this addition. Just reflect on what we're doing to x. We're multiplying it by 3 pi, and then we're adding 1. So we've got to subtract 1 first, because that was the last thing we did, to get y minus 1 is equal to 3 pi x. Now, x has been multiplied by 3 and pi, it's just been multiplied by 3 pi, so we divide both sides by 3 pi, and we get y minus 1 over 3 pi is equal to x. Let's do question 10. We've got y is equal to a minus b over c minus x. Now, this is very challenging, but let's see if we can actually use our swapsy tricks. Now, x is within a term that's being subtracted from something, so we can use the subtraction swapsy trick. So we can swap the thing we're subtracting, this, and the result. So we have b over c minus x is equal to a minus y. And we've got something which is simpler now because this fraction that x is in is not being subtracted from something. Then we could use the swapsy trick again because x is in the denominator of this fraction. So we could swap the thing we're dividing by and the result. So we then have b over a minus y is equal to c minus x. And now, we can use the swapsy trick again, but for subtraction, because x has been subtracted from something. So we could swap the thing we're subtracting and the result. So we get 
c minus b over a minus y is equal to x, and we're done. But this is probably in excess of the difficulty you would find in a GCC paper or equivalent. What about 11? We've got a over x plus 1 is equal to b over c. Now, whenever you have a fraction on both sides of the equation and nothing else, so you haven't got plus something or whatever, we can do something called cross-multiply. And what that means is you can do this thing times this thing is equal to this thing times this thing. So you can see when you times them, you get this kind of cross shape. So we can do a times c, ac, is equal to b times x plus 1. b brackets x plus 1. Note the use of brackets. And now because we've got no fractions, it's just a bit easier. So x, we're adding 1, then we're times it by b. So we could divide both sides by b. Or if you wanted to, you could expand these brackets at this point. And then we just subtract 1. So we get ac over b minus 1 is equal to x. Now I've got these two test your understanding questions which I want you to try. So you may want to pause the video after I read these out. So firstly, make q the subject of the formula p is equal to root q minus 5r. So let me write that out. And the second one I want you to do, LXO again, make x the subject of y is equal to a squared minus bx squared. So in this case, we want to make x the subject, and here we want to make q the subject. So you may want to pause the video at this point. Right, let's have a go. We want to make q the subject, so let's get rid of the stuff around it. We're square rooting it, then we're subtracting 5r. So let's add 5r first to get rid of the minus 5r. p plus 5r is equal to root q. And then we want to get rid of that square root around the q, so we square both sides, so that gives us p plus 5r all squared, because the whole thing is being squared, is equal to q, because the squaring gets rid of that square root, and that one is done. What about this? Well, we could use a swapsy trick, because x is in a term which has been subtracted from something, so we use a swapsy trick to swap the thing we're subtracting and the result, so we get bx squared is equal to a squared minus y, now, x is being squared, then we're timesing it by b, so we're going to divide by b first. x squared is equal to a squared minus y over b. And then we want to get rid of that squared, so we undo it by square rooting on both sides. So we have the square root of a squared minus y over b. And although the mark scheme would likely condone the lack of it, we should probably put that plus or minus, because we square rooted both sides.